Hey, welcome back, Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. Now, we recently did a video where we talked about the seven reasons why you would choose a real camera over a smartphone. It's only fair now that we do the opposite. Seven reasons today why you would choose a smartphone over a real camera. I get asked for advice from a lot of our viewers about starting their own photography YouTube channels. And I always tell them that one of the hardest challenges that I had to deal with had nothing to do with business or finances, but rather the mental toll that can take on you when you choose to put yourself out there. Now I thought I'd be able to shrug off criticism easily, but for a long time, it really got to me. And I was embarrassed to ask for help. I didn't feel like I had time to make appointments or go down to an office. What I had to realize is that I didn't need to deal with this alone. If this sounds familiar, you should try BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. Your schedule is your own with BetterHelp, and you can talk to one of the over 30,000 therapists in their network with a phone call, video call, or via messaging, whatever is easiest for you. You simply fill out a questionnaire, and BetterHelp will assess your needs and then match you up with a therapist. It's the perfect way to get help if you feel uncomfortable in face-to-face -face situation. And if the therapist you are with doesn't feel like a good match, you can switch at any time without any additional cost or any stress at all. There's real power in talking to someone. Getting your thoughts out of your head can make the biggest difference. If you think therapy could help you, click the link in the description and you'll save 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Now we felt like it was a really good time to make this video because since releasing our last one, we've now played with the brand new Apple iPhone 15 Pro and the Pro Max, as well as the Google Pixel 8 Pro. That has also just been released. And we reviewed both those products in terms of how it affects photographers and videographers. So today again, remember this video is not about saying, Saying, oh, you should just get a smartphone or you should just get a real camera. It's really about giving you the information to know when you've got the right tool for the right job. And today, the two examples we're going to use, I've got the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max here, and we've got our good old Canon EOS R5. Let's get to it. Now, just to give some context, we were recently on a big road trip to Idaho, and that actually gave me a lot of clarity in this regard because I got to play with extremely long telephoto lenses and professional mirrorless cameras, but I also used the iPhone 15 Pro Max a lot and the new Google Pixel 8. We were testing all of them, and the first thing I'm going to say that's great about a smartphone is really that old adage that the best camera is the one that you have with you at the time because the beauty here is these are discreet and they're compact enough that I always have it with me. I mean, not only are smartphones compact, but the fact is that they're just so ubiquitous in society now that we just don't give them a second glance. Everybody's used to people having their phones up here. Who knows what they're doing? Taking your photo, playing games, checking their email. It could be tons of things. But the fact of the matter is, when you are shooting discreet situations, people just don't even notice or care anymore that you have a smartphone. Certainly not the same way they would if you hold up a large mirrorless camera with a lens on it. They're also silent. Right? I mean, there's no sound if you want. You can turn them off. There's no mechanical shutters. So for street photography, it actually gives you some interesting opportunities where you can catch beautiful candids and just blend into the background while still taking photos. I mean, most mirrorless cameras, you can't put them into silent mode using electronic shutter, but then you get rolling shutter issues. Any of the cameras that are actually capable of silent shooting in electronic shutter without rolling shutter, they're quite expensive. Okay, so the next topic that I wanna cover is the LCD displays, the back panels. Now, we've talked about how cameras like the Canon R5 have excellent back display panels. I mean, these are basically 2.1 million dots. We always talk about cameras in terms of dots, and then we talk about phones, we talk about them in terms of resolution. But just to give you context, the back display here is gonna be almost 11 million dots in comparison, and of course, it is physically much larger. Now, it's not all perfect. There are still some issues. For example, with phones, if I wanna change my angle, I can't really change the angle of the phone. I have to get down low or get above it to see things. But especially on bright sunny days like today, this is going to be way more viewable than any screen you'll find on a camera. Still, do I wish that there was some sort of electronic viewfinder function for a smartphone? Absolutely. It'd be great if there's like a USB plug in here that I could rotate and adapt, hold my eye up to. Maybe someone will make something like that. Now, speaking of displays, let's talk about HDR next. Now, HDR, high dynamic range. Wow, back in the day, that used to be where you would take multiple exposures on a camera like this and stack them all together, but those days are long gone because the fact is that camera sensors now are capable of excellent dynamic range. But it's one thing to be able to capture HDR. It's another to be able to actually display it, and that's where a smartphone has a distinct advantage. Smartphones can shoot HDR photos. We've got iPhone doing it for a long time. Google Pixel 8 has now just introduced their own Ultra HDR format, but the displays will then also show you that extended dynamic range and the enhanced brightness that these incredible screens are capable of showing. You can shoot HDR photos on standard cameras, but you don't have any way to display it properly, and it's just a real problem that the mirrorless cameras have to catch up on. 
Next topic, connectivity. I mean, here's the thing. Let's see I take a stunning picture of Jordan with this very high-end mirrorless camera, and now I want to put it onto social media. So I download the Canon Camera Connect app, and then I try to hook it up to my smartphone. Hopefully, it recognizes the Bluetooth, and then I'm looking through the menu to find the photo that I want, and then I'm going to copy it over here, and well, now it's not working, and it's uploading, and oh, it. I mean, I just don't want to do it anymore. I give up. Good job. You've taught me never to use that kind of thing again. And I know we're picking on Canon, but the truth of the matter is pretty much all the manufacturers, their apps are to some degree or not inconvenient. Trash. We all know and appreciate that the big benefit here with smartphones in terms of connectivity is I can go right from taking a photo onto social media, sharing whatever, and it's dead simple. And you might say, oh, Chris, it's not that hard to use the apps. It's not that big a deal. And that's true. But remember that nowadays, convenience is currency. And the less steps it takes, the more likely you'll be able to use it. Also, if we think about the output like social media, shooting a photo on my Canon R5 and then putting it onto my social media like Instagram, am I really going to notice the inherent image quality benefit? If it's there when I could just take it on a smartphone now, which is very capable in its own right, have that photo go on way easier, and really nobody's going to notice there's an image quality difference at all. So that brings us right into our next topic, which is editing your photos in the actual camera itself. I mean, even the best mirrorless cameras give you very rudimentary capabilities to process your RAWs in a minor way, or maybe stitch together photos for like high resolution multi-shot work. But a lot of companies, here's looking at you, Sony, don't even let you do any of that in camera. So we've kind of gotten used to it, and I get it. I mean, you don't have a really big display here to do a lot of major editing work, but it'd be nice to have some stuff. I'm surprised they haven't done it already. Because then when you look at the smartphone, you've got a beautiful screen, and you've got the capability to do things like blur the background artificially, or change your exposure. You can download apps like Lightroom Mobile. I I mean, this is really powerful stuff. And that's where we have another huge inherent advantage with a smartphone that we just talked about, and that's the connectivity, because with things like Google Pixel's Magic Editor, I can connect online, upload my photos to the cloud, and then I can use their service to do some very powerful editing still right on the phone. And even if you feel that the editing that's capable there and the artificial looks aren't quite as good as what you'll get with a Photoshop degree, you're right. But it's probably good enough for most people's uses. So the next thing I want to talk about is lenses. Now, of course, mirrorless cameras give you way more lens options than you'll ever get in a smartphone. There's no debating that. That's a huge advantage for mirrorless cameras. But of the lenses that you do get on a smartphone, a lot of them are actually quite capable, and they can give you some very interesting looks. So for example, the main camera here is roughly a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent look to the lens. It's a nice bright aperture, but more importantly, if I want to get a shallow depth of field, I can fake it. I can use the built-in smartphone smartphone, sort of like digital artificial faux bokeh. And the fact is on an Apple product like this, for example, the results are very realistic. They actually do a great job with people and pets, but even just objects that you select in the foreground, it can do a very convincing job of giving you a nice, soft looking background. In order to do that on a full frame mirrorless like this, I'd be looking at an expensive 24 millimeter 1.4 kind of lens. I mean, way more expensive than even the most expensive smartphone. And on top of that, companies like Canon, they don't even make an RF mount 24 millimeter 1.4, so you can't even rely on the advantage that a mirrorless camera would normally provide. And we're vlogging because our next topic is specifically video stabilization. So I'm actually vlogging here with the Panasonic S52X, actually one of the best stabilizers you're going to find in a full frame camera. I've also got electronic stabilization turned on to make it fair and give it as good a chance as possible. But the fact is, it's just very difficult to stabilize full frame cameras. You have a big advantage when you go to the smaller sensors. Also, holding this camera out at arm's length to keep it fair is heavy. And now we're on the Apple iPhone. First off, much easier to carry at arm's length, and we're getting excellent excellent stabilization even though we're walking on the same trail. The fact of the matter is, yes, you could use a gimbal or something like that on a full frame camera, but with a smartphone, you just don't have to. And that saves you a lot of time and a lot of money. And let's say you are vlogging and then, you know, something, you hear weird sounds behind you, you get worried, and, and then something chases you. Well, then you got the sports mode and the sports mode is fantastic because look how smooth it looks. Well, there's our seven reasons why you might want to choose a smartphone over a real camera. And I think the big takeaway, of course, is that it comes down to things like the compact nature of it, the fact that you already have it with you, but also just how convenient it is not only to take pictures, but to edit them, to share them, to post them. I think also when we talk about image quality, a mirrorless camera is always going to have the advantage. Absolutely. But you'd be surprised how close a phone can come, especially with its main camera. But shooting landscapes in Idaho has actually really surprised how well the smartphone did image quality wise. 
I mean, dealing with scenes where I've got dark shadows, bright highlights, it compressed and managed all that dynamic range really well. The fact that I've got beautiful HDR output, which looks brilliant right out of camera on the screen, and also the fact that I can take those 48 megapixel RAW files, put them into Lightroom, and treat them like I would a mirrorless file, where I've got lots of detail, I can push and pull shadows, change white balance, change color. It was really quite an enlightening experience. Smartphones still have a long way to come, and there's always going to be situations that they just cannot touch when it comes to smartphone versus mirrorless camera, but this industry is improving so rapidly, faster than pretty much any other camera industry, that we're going to see more and more strides taken in what these phones can actually deliver. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments below. Let us know your opinions on when you think a smartphone's better than a mirrorless camera or vice versa. We always love to get that feedback. Please check out the podcast as well. If you haven't already, you can leave your comments there. We'll always answer those too. It's right here on the same channel or all your favorite podcasting apps just look for petapixel podcast like and subscribe to the channel thanks so much for joining us we'll see you soon